Um, hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm going to be presenting on orbits. They are essentially the second part of transformation than orbits. Uh, we'll discuss them what they are. And uh, just a quick disclaimer, I started preparing this at 11 in the night uh, when Michael said that there are still open slots available. All right, uh, so one of the things that I think someone mentioned yesterday was that if you are, if, yeah, if, if you're under 40 and you're still doing C++, maybe you should reconsider your software career kind of thing. And that was slightly unsettling because I'm 27. <laughs> that, that, that implies that I have 13 years in which every day I go through this and remember this quote every time. Uh, so, the, so, the, so the idea behind this basically you have to learn programming, but you have to learn programming from a language oblivious point of view. Um, uh, so this is my second disclaimer. If you have read this book properly, then uh, your next four minutes are going to be wasted. Uh, but uh, so, uh, uh, so my, 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 the, the point of this uh, lightning talk is that we have some common pro uh, programming problems and we, we should really drill down into uh, what, what makes those problems and what makes those problems interesting and maybe we, we can have finer solutions and easier solutions to, towards things. So yeah, what's the most common programming interview question like ever? Like if you start preparing for a programming interview, what's the first thing that you see? I think to me, I think it's this thing. And I'm sure that people who work at Microsoft, they know that they have solved this. All right, uh, so uh, consider this as a linked list uh, for people uh, who are in Southern Hemisphere and do not know this, this is actually Ursa Minor, but I conveniently reused this as a linked list. So uh, one of the most common ways of solving this problem is that you have, uh, you, you start with two pointers, one of them is here, one of them is turtle, here moves faster than the turtle. Uh, and this, this works fine and the, the idea is that whenever they move, they, if they meet at one point, that means that the linked list had a loop, which is which is fair enough. But the idea is that th this approach is like, once you have solved this problem, then it cannot be generalized further. Now think about this. Uh, so you, you 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 compose your linked list into this small, uh, into this mathematical construct. So, so you have this handle size, which is defined by edge, and then you have the circle uh, thing, uh, and you, you measure the length of that as C. And you define these two points. One of them is the point at where your hair and turtle are going to meet. And one of them is the connection point at which you actually, uh, will, where your circle starts. So once you, once you decompose your problem into this, then it essentially becomes simple. <laughs> but the, the, the good thing about this is this is all high school algebra, which everyone knows. And it's completely language oblivious. You do not have to learn anything of C++ or any other language. Uh, so this is, all, all of these concepts are formalized in elements of programming. Uh, or, so transformation is, so, so when you move from one step to another link, uh, one step, one node in the linked list to another node, uh, you are essentially trans applying a transformation to that uh, node. And for the linked list, it is super easy. You, you are just getting the next value. And uh, so I, uh, like, up, at, at 11 in the night, then I, I coded this, like, I. I wrote all the equations and saw this. So basically this is like, uh, can everyone see this? Right. Uh, so the essential idea is that you allocate a, a linked list and uh, I'll just run this program and it will print the linked list first. So this is a simple linked list. It does not have a loop. Uh, I'll check whether it terminates and then I'll manually create the loop. So basically what I did was I took the 80th node and then uh, assigned that to 22nd node. Um, and then I'll check the loop again. And then uh, once I find the uh, collision point, then I've, I'll try to find the connection point. Connection point was the point where the loop, where the circle actually starts. And then once I have that, then I'll try to find the handle size and I'll try to find the circle, uh, circle size. Uh, so if I run this, uh, it runs uh, pretty good actually. So the, it prints the list first, which is like one to 98. And then uh, it says, list does not have a loop, obviously. And then once we create the loop, it says the loop uh, is detected, and it actually prints loop started at 22, and actually gives you all the decomposable parts that we had, like 20, 21, 21 is like, if, you, um, if your node is pointing 22, that means 21 is the, uh, from one to 21 is your handle size, and the loop, uh, uh, the circle size is 50, 58. So it works pretty well, and the, the, uh, the, 
The good thing is that I only had to implement one collision point, and everything else is actually based on that. So it's like super, super composable. Uh, uh, that, is, uh, that is because once you create a loop, then you have essentially do not have any uh, pointer towards the nodes that you have lost. Yeah, so, so, yeah. so, so that's basically the idea, that you, you understand the basic principles of doing things and do not rely on the language. So I've started doing this in, uh, in practice as well. This is actually a Hello World program in a language called Whitespace. 